if you have any interest in data science or business analytics and are planning to or have already enrolled in a program well one point that your professors will not tell you and even your employers who you will interview with are not going to tell you this and this is a bit of painful reality This is Chaitanya Sambhara, faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas, Arlington. Data science or business analytics in the last three years or so have become the most sought after degrees in the whole world. Increasingly, people from a diverse set of backgrounds that includes computer science, engineering, commerce, mathematics, you name it, are pursuing higher degrees in data science. So a helicopter is distracting me, so I'm looking around where is this helicopter going and if I can start recording again. Okay, time to look at the script. Okay, let's start again. Go to any university to name my own university at the University of Texas Arlington. Data science and business analytics classes are filled up with students. You will not find a single empty seat. In fact, there are far more applicants for those degrees than there are seats for them. And what happens when the students actually join the degree program? They take data science and related courses where the professor walks into the class, gives them polished, nice, good quality data sets on which they use a variety of techniques that can range from SQL to regression analysis to cluster analysis, partial least squares, structural equation modeling and whatnot. What happens then is that students use these data sets in class, they do a bunch of homeworks using these data sets and then they get their degrees. Then they apply for jobs and go for interviews. And in those interviews, these students are asked some fundamental questions about data analysis techniques. They are asked to write some SQL queries and then they are given some data sets to analyze and come up with some interesting insights from that data. And when they finally crack their interviews, they get hired and these youngsters become very happy. They think that they are ready for the real world and then the reality strikes. The painful reality is that whatever you have learned during your degree program is based on processed clean data sets. In the real world, however, the data can be quite messy. And if you think that every single time nicely processed data set will be handed over to you, well, you are mistaken. You are in fact in for an ugly surprise. A couple of months ago, a student from India reached out to me saying that that student really wants to work with me, assist me in my research work in return for a recommendation letter. And he wanted me to give him some of my data sets so that he can analyze the data. But then guess what? I had a lot of raw data that needed to be processed. And what was this raw data like? Well, I had 720 10k reports of companies and the moment the student realized what all work needed to be done he backed off the whole exercise of collecting and processing the data and nicely categorizing the data into one of the three binary variables would have taken around 12 weeks of work so if you are someone who is interested in a career in data science or are thinking about pursuing a career in this area you should know that data does not always come to you on a platter. Sometimes hard effort could be needed to get good quality data. So where from and how do data scientists get their data? Well, there are five broad categories. The first source of data is internal performance data from the systems from your own company. This could include point of sale systems or all the transactions that happen on your company's website. This is usually the most reliable kind of data that you can get. It is because companies collect this data themselves. This is also usually the cleanest data that needs the least amount of processing. Companies can design their systems, configure and automate systems so that the data that you get is already processed and is in good quality ready to be analyzed. Companies usually collect this data in data warehouses where there are certain programs that aggregate the data for analysis. The second source of data that companies get is survey of stakeholders and this survey could be cross-sectional or longitudinal. What I mean by longitudinal is that you have a certain set of people who are surveyed and the same set of people are surveyed time and again for multiple time periods. Companies can survey their customers for example where they go directly to them and ask certain questions. Companies then can also talk to their suppliers at multiple levels up or down their supply chains. The third source of data is usually market survey. This survey is conducted on potential customers. A lot of times these surveys are done on social media websites where for example Facebook would ask you have you seen an ad related to this company in recent days or in other cases companies might incentivize normal people who are not yet their customers about what are they looking for and in many of these cases the respondents are incentivized by offering them some Amazon gift card and other things like five or ten dollars reward. The fourth source of data that companies have is usually experiments. Yes some companies in fact many companies perform experiments where they try to understand what was the impact of a certain decision but experiments are usually done mostly by governmental agencies where they try to examine impact of their policy decisions for example if you implement midday meal 
does that improve the quality of grades that students are getting now here you will need a control group and a treatment group control group is where the treatment was not given and the treatment group obviously received the treatment for example in the case of midday meal scheme you can compare those schools that did not receive midday meal schemes to the groups that actually receive midday meal schemes and then you have a time period which was pre midday meal schemes and post midday meal schemes and then you can actually see is your policy working the way you had expected and the fifth most popular and broad category of data is social media analytics there is a popular thing called sentiment analysis where social media is studied and then it is examined what kind of things are people searching for what kind of hashtags are trending what are people saying about our products what kind of reviews our products or services are getting on google and other websites and then companies try to analyze who are the customers who are giving us positive feedback and who are the people who are giving us negative feedback and how could we actually do better based on the data that we have analyzed so i hope all this was helpful thank you for watching jai hind and god bless america